let's have fun with silk screens today and not just any silk screens these are the brand new polymer clay TV silk screens and they look like this this one is called floral fantasy this is the large background image which I'll show you what they look like when they make an image in a minute this is the circles version and this is the squares and you'll notice that this is a thin piece of basically silk fabric that's infused with a plastic type coating and then the stencil is the silk screen. So I'm going to show you how to use those in just a minute. First I wanted to show you what the designs look like. So this right here is the circles version. So these are all two inch circles. These are the squares, and with the squares you get six two-inch squares and a border strip that's four inches long. Great for making bracelets and things like that. And then with this background image, you can make big things like a light switch plate. It's actually a full half sheet of paper. You'll see that there's two on a sheet. and. Um, you can also screen an entire piece of clay and then like cut out certain parts. So without further ado, let me show you how these beauties work. Before I actually get started and do any screening, I want to talk to you about care and how to take care of your silk screens and what supplies you're going to need. So I've got some Primo Sculpey accents in my favorite color, which is a metallic copper. And that has been rolled out and laid flat on a tile. And the reason for that is so that it's mobile when I'm done and you need to let your paint dry. So if I put it on a tile rather than directly on my glass work surface, I can like set it aside to dry and not and, and just be able to keep working. I've got some acrylic paint that I'm going to use to decorate with. I've got a tub of water. Now, ideally, in my ideal world, I would um, not need this and I would go straight to the sink. But since I'm filming, I need a little time between when I'm talking to you and when I'm washing out my screen. So I'm going to make sure that there's enough water in this so that I can dunk my silk screen in it so that I don't have to run directly to the sink. Because basically what we have here is very tiny holes. This is a very, very fine mesh, and if I allow my acrylic paint to dry on here, it's going to clog up the stencil and I won't be able to use it anymore. And since this is not the, um, not a throwaway tool, you want to keep this for a long, long time, so you want to be sure that you care for it the best way. So I'm going to keep my water off to the side there and be ready for my dunking. I'm also going to need a squeegee. This, I actually um, like these. I get these for like a dollar at my local discount store or at your Lowe's or Home Depot. This is actually for spackling the wall, but it's a really nice sort of semi-rigid, semi-flexible squeegee. It's made of plastic and I find that this is easy to find and easy to use. So I'm working, I took away the paper and I'm working directly on the tabletop because this is messy. So I'm going to use some of these circles. And when you get your silk screen, you'll see that there's a sort of dull side and a more shiny side. And you're going to want to put the shiny side down on the clay. And then what you're going to want to do is burnish it down. Now I'm not rubbing really hard but I am noticing like there can be little bubbles underneath it and you don't want those because they will um, get in the way of your design. So you just want to press it firmly down so that none of it is popping up and that you're seeing that your design is stuck to the clay. And then for this one I think I'm going to go ahead and use this um, dark brown. This is raw umber. It's just acrylic paint from the craft store. I think I got this at Hobby Lobby if you're wanting to know where you can get the fine touch. And I'm just going to run 
a line of it along the top of the screen like that. And then I'm going to drag it, pull it, pull it, drag it, smush it. Make sure that it's nice and thick right over that design. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to like scrape it super thin because and you do want to sort of push it through the stencil because if you don't make it thick enough then it won't go through your design and you won't see it on the clay and then you can lift up a corner and test it out see that and as long as you don't move the silk screen when you do that you can keep working I tend to be super light-handed anytime I'm using paint or any kind of medium so I'm gonna make sure that I go over this a lot and always keep rags around because you do want to clean up as you go I like to keep things clean and not have paint everywhere and then I'm going to go ahead and carefully peel this back, revealing the design. And then I'm just going to stick this down in my water so that the paint can start coming off. I'm just going to leave this now for a while and we'll come back to it while I go rinse this thoroughly in the sink. Now I've got some Primo Peacock Pearl, which is another one of my favorite colors. Most of these new colors that they came out with last year in the pearls are super favorites of mine. So this time I'm going to do the squares. And once again, making sure that my shiny side, which by the way, is going to be the side that your silk screen tends to want to curl in on, is the shiny side. Okay, And I am going to put that down on this piece of clay. Again, pressing and burnishing that design down flat onto my clay. Doing my best with these air bubbles that want to form, but you just press them out. Because you are dealing with basically a plastic. So sometimes you have to tell it what to do be firm with it. Okay, and now I'm going to use a magenta heavy bodied acrylic paint, which I really like. It's a ranger color. Uh, let me see here. Who does this? Dian Dina Wakely? if you're interested and you want to know exactly what I'm using but you know by the way you don't have to ever use exactly what we're using these silk screens will work with virtually any acrylic based paint or um, ink you have to test it and make sure that it's gonna work so you might have to test your inks or, and paints just to be sure that you're going to get the effect that you want, but the silk screens are designed to go with acrylics. And if you feel like you're not getting enough paint, which sometimes is the case with me, like I said, I'm, I'm light-handed with this stuff, you can always add more. But your goal, of course, is to fill all those holes and get the paint down in the cracks and onto your clay. Just cleaning off my squeegee and look at that. That's so beautiful. And of course, dunking my silk screen immediately into the water. See it, it starts releasing the paint from the cracks and the holes in the silk screen, which is what you want. And I'm gonna let this dry and go wash out my screen. 
for this I am going to use Primo Accents again and this color is bronze another one of my faves it's so look at that color it's so nice okay so for the paint I am going to use Viva Decor Precious Metal Color in Pistachio which is this is my favorite mica paint it's got a lot of mica particles in it it's an acrylic paint um, I know a lot of you know that I work with Pebio a lot and they have some really fun paints like that like Pebio Moon that has mica in it but do not use this this is a solvent based paint and you can't clean it out of the screen very easily I mean you could use mineral spirits but I'm not sure what that would do to the screen so just stay away from your solvent based paints and use ones that you know are acrylic and water based I'm just going to take a good look at my screen here and decide which portion of it I want to show up on my piece of clay here. So probably something with a little bit of border and some flower elements. So I'm going to go ahead now, even though I'm using the full size silk screen, I don't have to make my clay as big as the screen. If I know that I'm not going to make an object that's that big, then I don't have to waste the clay or the paint. So I have something in mind I'm going to make, and the reason I would use this large screen rather than the other square or circles is so that I have no seam lines in here and I can make something large. Okay, now this paint I'm going to use a stir stick, a popsicle stick, to get it onto my screen because it tends to be a little bit runnier. And I'm just going to go ahead and run a bead of it right along the edge of my piece there. Now I tend to work small, which is why I'm not using the whole entire screen. Elisa works quite big, so I imagine she would use the entire thing and come up with something really cool. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use my squeegee to paint this right onto the screen, drawing it across, getting it everywhere, nice and thick, and then Wipe off my extra. That's so pretty. And then dunk my screen right into my waiting jar of water so that I can talk to you for a second before running to the sink. So this paint needs to dry, obviously, okay? And all the other paint that I've set out, I'm going to wait for all of my silkscreen pieces to completely dry before I go on to the next step. Now that all the paint is dry, we can play with these and make something from them. So you just want, you don't want to bake the clay, it's still uncured clay, but the paint is dry so I can touch it and not mess up the design. So I'm going to set them aside and work one by one here, starting with the circular design. And I've got my set of graduated circle cutters and I'm going to use my Sculpey lentil tray here. and. Sometimes I use it on the um, concave side, and sometimes you use it on the convex side. So today I'm going to make domed beads by using it on this side, and I'm going to go ahead and find my cutter that most closely matches the size, which is my 2-inch circle. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a cut and a twist. Okay, and let's see, maybe I'll go smaller on another one of these. Let's just get the interior flower on this one. Cut and twist. 
And here we've got choices now because your bead set has various sizes. So you can just pull different sections of the circles. You don't have to feel like you have to use the whole thing. Let's see, for this one I'll do this medium sized one as well. Okay, and then what you can do here is peel away the extra and you'll notice that on some of the clay you still have the paint and you can save this to use it in some other spot or you can actually if you want to be really a stickler about it you can actually scrape off the paint to save your clay or you can mix the acrylic right into these scraps and you'll hardly even notice it so it's up to you how you want to use your scrap clay all right, so I'm gonna restack because I like to keep my studio neat. And then what you'll do here is use a nice sharp blade to get underneath your design and put it on here. Pick the circle that most closely matches the size and just gently firm it down like so so that in the baking process, this is going to bake domed. Okay. <laughs> All right, and then this one, I'm gonna pick this next bigger up circle just drape this over and see now that the paint is dry I can handle this and I don't have to worry about wrecking it. I'm going to get a different blade because that one is a little stiff to be trying to peel things up off the surface. This is my Sculpey blade that's more bendy. There we go. All right, and then this one I'll also put on this size. See the nice thing about this Sculpey palette thing is that it's got two of every size so that you can actually make double sided hollow beads if you wanted to by putting these two together back to back. And then this big one will go right over that largest dome right here. And I'm being pretty gentle. I'm just gently encouraging the clay to slope down over this tray. So now what we have is domed beads ready to go into the oven. And how you will use these in the future depends. Like right now, you could make holes for hanging. But I do think that I am going to stick these two back to back to make a double sided lentil bead and then I'll do something fun with the other two but I'll bake them right like this on the tray. Now let's talk about the square one on the peacock clay because this is an eye-popping beautiful combination and I know what I'm gonna do with this one I'm gonna make it into a magnet and I know what I'm gonna do with these I'm going to make these into earrings so I'm going to go ahead and cut my clay and set my edges off to the side. So I'm going to bake this right on the tile. I already know that. I looked at it and thought that design is going to make a gorgeous magnet. I'm going to take this strip out while I think about and ponder what I'm going to do with that. And for this section here, which is leaves, I'm going to square this up 
cut it in half. and use the fact that it's a complementary design on both sides, I'm going to make a hole at the top. And I'm just going to simply string these with jump rings and make them into earrings. And then this piece, I've got some other tools lying around here. Uh, let's see. This is one of the scallop border cutters and I think it's going to do a great job making me a border at the bottom. So I'm going to cut that clay off and give it sort of a Moroccan feeling and then cut off the edges here. See this, now that you have this designed clay you can sit here and play with it and think about it and decide how you want to use it and I might I think I'm gonna bake this and save it for a future project but the first thing I'm gonna do is look here at the where the design is stopping it's stopping on a point so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it at the point on this side too so that I have a nice, like, evenly shaped piece that I can use for a future project. I'm just going to bake it just like that, and I'll save it, keep it. Okay, and then this piece I definitely have something in mind for. So I have taken out this, which I like to keep these around in my studio, and I get these from home decor places. Uh, this is... Nevamar decorative surfaces and it came from a contractor it's like a linoleum for the kitchen and I like to save them to make things with them so that's why I made this piece that wide because I'm gonna make a bunch of little border pieces for it now this is another of the scallop design mold uh, border cutter things that we have at polymer clay TV and if you notice it lines up really nicely with the points on this border design down here so I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and cut along those almost but not perfect it's okay I'm gonna go ahead and cut that like that and then I'm going to use my knife to just come right up to it and make a slice there because I don't think I want, you'll see why I did that in a minute. And I might need to re, I mean, I need to press this harder one more time. Okay. So. Basically, I've got this piece and then I've got this scrappy piece that I don't need that I'll set off to the side. Okay, and then I'm going to use my other cutters to make some other shapes here. So here I'm going to cut a little bit of a wider one like this I'll just set that down and then this I think I will use as sort of a middle piece so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the top of it off with another border style like so. And I could even save this one if I really wanted to, but I, I don't think I'm gonna. Instead, I'm gonna take this piece 
and I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to roll this around the outside of that. I'm going to roll it tightly and make myself a bead. So I'll pick the side that looks coolest, press it down. and get myself a, I like to keep this around in the studio. This is a um, tube full of Amico bead pins. Just in case you have a moment like this where you're like, oh, look at that, I just made a cool bead and now I wanna pierce a hole in the center of it. So I'm gonna pierce and twist until I feel it poking the other side here. I'm going to twist it back out and go in the other side. This way you don't distort your bead and make it all oval shaped when you're putting a hole through it. And I'll just bake it right on the pin like that. And I'm going to bake these up and decorate that and then I will have made from one little silk screening session I will have made a magnet, a pair of earrings, a double sided lentil bead, and a little wall hanging. So you can see how fun it is to just go nuts. So I thought I'd show you a little bit of finishing on one of the projects because I'm not gonna do all of them because that would make this video super long. So basically I just used some paper Mod Podge and a piece of paper that I had previously made using my jelly plate. It's got a sort of iridescent green tint to it, which is gonna go great with the bronze that I um, have on my baked clay, which is now out of the oven. So I had Mod Podge that on, and now I'm just gonna cut it off on the edges here, gently with my X-Acto blade. Okay, let's set those to the side. I've got my glue gun firing up and I also have some beautiful ribbon that I got from India from a friend who went there and brought me back a baggie full of really interesting thick beautiful ribbons and I'm just gonna play around here for a second with placement because I do have several pieces of the clay that I want to arrange on here. And the ribbon might be too much, I don't know, we'll see. So let's see here. I have this piece which is sort of a, yeah that'll go nice right there. And then if I put this here and that across the bottom, just trying to find a pleasing arrangement. And once again, this might not work. We'll see. No, I kind of like having it there. Okay, so I think I'll put it maybe like that and really cover some of it with this piece of clay. Okay, so before I go any further, I'm going to cut my clay, and for that, I'm going to use a very sharp and stiff blade, because I want the clay to be exact. And you can do it after it's baked. And just slice straight down where you want it to be. Okay, and for this piece, I just want to kind of center things up. Maybe I'll do it like that so that you can see the points down at the bottom. 
And maybe I'll do these points facing up. That way I can see some of the blue poking through. You know, that's the effect that I wanted was to try to, let's see here. Yeah, like that. I want to try to center it so that I have the same amount of points going across. Just go ahead and slice your clay straight down, firm pressure with a nice new blade. So there I've got that design and then I just need to pick how this is going to be centered. Probably like that. So cut this side. And as the clay gets cooler, you might not want to do it up. Like this is a little bit, has a thickness to it. So I'm just deciding where my cut line is going to be. And then moving the clay off onto the flat surface. Like that because it's a little bit easier to cut straight down. Okay, so now I have my three pieces of clay, which are cut to fit. I have this is Mod Podged on there, and I have this piece of ribbon and my hot glue gun. So let's see. I'm going to try to catch the edges because this ribbon wants to fray. So I'm going to try to catch those edges with some hot glue before I go nuts here. And then gently stick that down to the edge and then I'll just put a little hot glue underneath Just enough to stick it down. Don't have to really go crazy. And then I'm going to see if I can cut this with my blade or if I'm going to need the scissor. Yeah, the blade works really good when you have a nice, fresh, clean blade. So there's that, and I am almost done. I just have to decide which pieces are going to go where. So I could do that. I know this piece is going to go up here near the top. So I'm going to go ahead and put hot glue on the back. Hot glue works great with polymer clay. Just get that centered up and press it down. And let's see where this one's going to go. I might do that with it. Or this and that. It's all about playing around until you like the composition. So I'm going to go ahead and put the glue on this ribbon because the clay is going to be up covering the ribbon. Like so. And then I think I like this because I'm actually thinking I don't know. Yeah, like that. Just going to make a little piece of artwork I can hang. You might decide you want to stamp a word on it or whatever, but I think I'm just going to let 
the patterns be the art. And then I had cut a piece of ribbon that will match, and I'm going to make a lark's head knot, which means I am taking the ribbon and putting it through from back to front in the middle, and then pulling it through itself like this. And then at the top, you can tie a knot so you can hang it. So I hope you have enjoyed this little tutorial. And I hope that you'll go over to the shop at Polymer Clay TV and check out the new silk screens, which there will be lots more coming. And have so much fun with them. There's so much you can do. I'm trying to grab here these lentil beads. And now you can pop them off of here. And they are concave on the back and if you wanted to make a double-sided necklace now you've got two that are the same size and you can just put them together and put a little line of clay there and bake it again and you've got a double-sided domed style of bead that is a whole other tutorial on how to make that work and I'm sure that you can find some on YouTube so I'm not going to show that today but that's how easy it is to make the components for making a double-sided lentil bead and those other pieces are ready to go ahead and all I need to do for this is just put a magnet on the back with some glue these are ready to be made into earrings just with earring findings pop through those holes and this I can use for another similar project because I really like making things like this. And look at that. I've got another bead because I just couldn't help myself with the scraps that were lying around. I made that bead. I made one in this color. So much fun. Don't forget to join us at polymerclaytv.com at the blog to check out more of what's going on with Elisa and I. And have a great week.